Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Today, we have an exciting show for investors. Joining us today is one of the most respected names in the precious metal space, David Morgan of The Morgan Report and the author of The Silver Manifesto. David, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. You know, David, uh, before we delve into who, what, and when for today's discussion, for first-time listeners, can you share why owning precious metals is vital to have in one's portfolio? Absolutely, because every in all of recorded history, every time a fiat or a non-backed monetary or currency system has arisen, it has failed. It's 100%. So right now, we are in an experiment with the U.S. dollar being the world's reserve currency, which all other currencies are tied to, and it's a completely unbacked system. It's an unsound system. And since all others have failed, we need to expect that this one will fail. We certainly have hard evidence that it is failing, because if you look at the Federal Reserve's own data, They'll tell you that the 1913 U.S. dollar that was worth 100 cents at that time is now roughly worth 3 cents. So 97 cents of that 100 have evaporated over roughly 100 years. So now what we're actually talking about is how long is it going to take for that other 3 cents to evaporate down to 2 cents or 1 cent or 0.1 cent or wherever it goes. I doubt it's going to go to absolute zero before there's a reset of some type. But uh, obviously, everyone that knows what's going on in the financial system is concerned about the inability of any nation state to pay back the indebtedness that they have encumbered upon their citizenry. Therefore, it behooves the individual to understand this, at least at a rudimentary level, and protect themselves by money that has never failed, and that's gold and silver. You know, David, thank you for clarifying that. One of the... Uh aspects I like about your your YouTube channel is the introductory video and I would encourage everyone to take a look at that but you really break down the definition of why it is precious and just for someone who hasn't taken a look at that can you share why is it precious and how just owning two ounces of silver uh, it, how that how that really plays into this discussion for today well thank you for bringing that up it's it was one of many videos that uh, had rolled around in my head before I actually uh, you know, went and made the video. Uh, it basically talks about what the amount of metal existing is above ground and how little demand it would take to evaporate the supply of silver. And in that video I talked about the amount of above ground silver being roughly, I think at that time it was one billion ounces, currently it's really two billion ounces. But I said if uh, everybody in the United States owned a couple of ounces of silver, it would basically eat up the entire annual supply of silver, and there wouldn't be anything left. In the world's population uh, of 7 billion people, only 5% of the world's population resides within the United States of America. So it's a very precious commodity. Uh, very few people understand the uh, dynamics of what the numbers are. In other words, and I tried to express it in a way that was very apparent to anybody that was just looking at the video, that the amount of silver versus other commodities is extremely small. Uh, if you look at, uh, we'll do one more real quick one, it's one of my favorites I've used in other interviews, but if you're on the moon with a big telescope and you were just kind of surveying the Earth, we're really sure what's going on but you were looking at uh, how many things were down there. You'd see a lot of highways and waterways. You'd see a lot of stuff. But if you zeroed in on the gas stations, you'd see gas stations all over the world. So that would represent the retail side of the oil market. And if you took two large truck stops, you could put all of the above ground silver supply under those with this room to spare. So in other words, if you were looking at all the gas stations in the world and saw all of that retail oil supply versus the two truck stops anywhere in the world would uh, be able to cover the entire silver supply. Now, this would be in two large bricks. I'm not talking about the port in a large you know, swimming pool form or whatever, but that's the amount of silver versus the amount of oil. And you could take that same thinking to cotton or cocoa or coffee or wheat or soybeans or whatever. 
So gold is even, it's actually, I want to be very clear here, when I say two million ounces of silver, I'm talking about investment grade silver. I'm talking about COMEX bars or retail market like uh, silver rounds or government minted coins like the Silver Eagle or um, the Canadian Maple Leaf or something like that. So there's roughly two billion ounces of investable silver and roughly five uh, billion ounces of investable gold. David, I've had a number of investors inquire if we could have your thoughts on the current state of precious metals. Specifically, is the bear cycle over in this secular bull market? Absolutely, the bear market's over. There's three reasons for that. One is silver's leaning gold. Two, the volumes are extremely high. And three, the precious metals mining shares are outperforming by a factor of about three to one. So those three things are all I need for verification that the bull market is finally uh, started again. Started basically the uh, beginning of this year, 2016. Silver at the high from year to date is up 40%. It's backed off some. We're having a bit of a correction here. And gold was up, I think, about 25%. So the bull market has restarted. And as far as the current state moving forward, we are in a very interesting time. Very rare in history where we have a currency crisis to the degree that we'll have this time. It's a global crisis. There's too much debt throughout all sovereign nations. It cannot be paid back. The citizenry cannot be uh, taxed anymore, really. Uh, there's no way to pay it off. So there has to be some type of reset. And during that process, usually currencies get revalued or a new system is uh, brought into the fore, which I think is going to be the case this time. And because of that, people will seek at some point safety and something they can trust. And one thing that has shown to be trusted throughout all of recorded history are the precious metals. There's no uh, electronic risk. There's no counterparty risk. It's universally recognized and universally admired for final settlement. So gold and silver uh, are outside of what I call the financial matrix and will be sought more and more by people throughout the world as a means to hold on to their financial uh, you know, those, great, uh, those are great characteristics and qualities to have in an investment. You know, when you look at a catalyst, what are they and what type of effect could they have for investors that either do or don't own precious metals? Well, there are several. I mean, you can look at people that are probably more articulate on the subject than I am. I uh, look at uh, <clears throat> Talib's book on uh, the Black Swan. These events that uh, take place, and we've already saw one on a global scale with the financial crisis of 2008, and those are the words that the mainstream uses. The problem has only gotten worse since that time. Uh, there was no real solution whatsoever. It's been papered over, and the debt's increased, and the leverage has increased. And there's been more derivatives that have been written on the debt and interest rate swaps <clears throat> going from that point till now. So they've exacerbated the problem. They made it a bigger problem. It's a worse problem. So the repercussions will be greater than they were in 2008, which means, again, you really need to protect yourself. So I am not happy with the current state of affairs, but, you know, the human spirit is something that's uh, rather miraculous, especially when times tough. Many people actually are at their best during those time, times of high pressure. Not everyone, of course, but uh, some individuals rise in occasion. And we will move on and move forward. Exactly how the reset will look is up for conjecture. There's a lot that has been written about it. Uh, in fact, I'll be writing about it in the next issue of the Order Report. But no one knows for certain. What we do know is that the general standard of living in the West will be decreasing. The standard of living in the emerging markets has certainly come up a great deal, particularly in China and India. Uh, and other uh, Asian nation, or nations, but uh, that will probably put on hold or a standstill for a while as things uh, rebalance. Right now, the system is totally out of balance, and the time has come where it needs to come back into balance, and this will probably take place due to a financial crisis, not due to a meeting of the G20 or whatever. That will take place after the crisis has emerged, in my view. And, and speaking of catalysts, uh, and not to make this a, a political discussion, but politics do uh, have an effect on, on economics. So I'd like to get your view briefly. 
is there a, 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 a good or bad scenario with either nominee taking the office? I've asked the question before, I'll be consistent. To me, it doesn't make much difference. To my personal view, I'm pretty apolitical. I'm similar to Joan Salente in that idea. But for me, it's like changing the captain on the Titanic. I mean, once it hit the iceberg, it really didn't matter who was at the helm. The ship was going down. So that's how I see it. Uh, there could be some relief. There's a lot of people that have hope that if a certain candidate gets in, that um, you know the ship will be able to avert the problem. It could be right in my study, in my particular strong belief of, of opinion. No, it won't make us do well, I concur with that sentiment as well because, to me, I, I view both of them as Keynesians. And so if you're a Keynesian, <laughs> that's probably not the solution. I'm sorry, that is not. The, let me take out the word probably. That is not the solution. Uh, you know, David, based on the value proposition you've outlined, what actions should the individual investor take? Well, if you have the names, then I suggest that you, uh, whatever your investable capital is, whether you're modest means or, or higher, I think a 10% allocation to precious metals is probably all of us required. Certainly, you don't want to bet the ranch on you know, gold and silver. They're, uh, they're basically money. Uh, they don't pay interest. Of course, the negative interest rates are better than that. But regardless, you don't need a whole lot for protection, but you need some. Uh, if you were in Venezuela right now and you had a, you know, a pretty good stack of silver, you would be very, very grateful that you had that because you could spend it in the marketplace for food. A lot of people don't have the means to do that. They don't own silver, and the currency is basically worthless at this point. So there's lots of reasons throughout history. Will it come to the United States or not? We don't know. Could it? Possibly. Will it? Again, can't be sure of anything, but what we can be sure of is that uh, gold and silver has been, have been trusted as a means of final settlement for over 5,000 years. So because of that fact, having some as a means of... Uh, financial wherewithal behooves anybody that wants to study this topic at a cursory level. You don't need to go very far in Google to determine the value of gold and silver throughout history. And do you still view that, have that same regard with uh, platinum and palladium? You know, it's interesting. I mean, from an Austrian perspective, platinum and palladium both are classic money. They're recognizable, they're scarce, they're divisible, they're fun, all those things. However, you know, from a legalist perspective, they are not really valued as money. But I want to add on to that, because as this run to gold takes place, and it will, what you'll see is a spillover into those other white notes. I'm almost certain of it. So right now would probably be a good time if you can handle the risk of getting a platinum plating because they're really unwanted and uh, really ignored by the precious metals community. But if gold is very difficult to get, you know, physical gold and physical silver, and I think that will be. And then people will grab whatever they can get. And there's only other two other metals that really fulfill that. I mean, people ask me about copper. Is that, would that work or not? Could, you know, the market knows more than me. I mean, it might, tell, you know, spill over into the copper market as a monetary asset. Certainly it's, you know, valuable. But I'd say, you know, if I was going to pick a couple that will follow gold and silver once the market strengthens even further and the markets in the physical realm tighten up, tighten up I would suggest that the platinum play would probably uh, come up rather strongly. Well, thank you for sharing that. In closing, David, can you share with listeners why the Morgan Report has established itself as one of the most respected newsletters in the natural resource space? Hard work. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. I mean, we don't mess around. But first of all, I guess experience counts. I think it does. I mean, I've got probably 40 years or so of experience in the resource sector. I started very young, and I made every mistake you can make. I chased the penny stocks with a high risk, high reward, and not realizing the amount of research that really needed to be done. Of course, in those days, there wasn't an internet. There wasn't Google. Uh, you basically had to take people's words for things. You could call the company and talk to the uh, investor relations department, but uh, they might be given a line and really had no way to verify it. Regardless, you know, when I started Morgan Report, I didn't want anyone that followed our work to kind of go through the same pitfalls that I had personally done. So 
I divided the portfolio into top tier, mid tier, and speculative categories and taught everybody that uh, speculations are just that, bet a little with a lot. And that big, solid growth companies that were unhedged and cash rich were the place to put big money. And that portfolio uh, analysis or recommendations actually worked really well. I'll tell you a real brief story. There's a gentleman that was very close to me at one point that lived in Vancouver, BC. And he was kind of on the inside track. He knew a lot of these junior mining executives. He could rub elbows with these guys, the geologists, the uh, upper management. Basically, he was what you might call on the inside track. So he took his investment funds and basically moved into a lot of these junior mining situations with a lot of really good information. His wife, on the other hand, he took the approach of following almost identically what the Morgan Report was suggesting for uh, asset allocation. Her portfolio outperformed his about three to one. <laughs> so conservative doesn't always mean that you are not going to make good gains. In fact, uh, that approach uh, you know, obviously speaks for itself. So that's something to bear in mind. Most newsletter people are focused on these little bitty, teeny weeny story stocks. And people love stories. I mean, in fact, I, you know, I, I still continue my education. And part of it has to do with uh, public speaking. And a lot of the things that you're taught is to, you know, tell a story. You know, tell a story from the state. People love stories. And I've done that from time to time. Normally I kind of just get down to it and do the presentation. But regardless of that, I want to bring that idea forward to these story stocks. Or, you know, so-and-so, when I was on the Straight River in the Amazon, there was this gold mine. It was unbelievable, phenomenal, blah, 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 blah. And, and these, some of these guys could tell these stories. It's unbelievable. Fantastic. I mean, oh, God, I've got to own this company because... But look, you know, in the uh, 1760s, they pulled out, you know, billions of ounces of gold, or whatever the story is. And you know what? They're entertainment. A lot of these things are just that. They're a story. There's not a sense to them. So be careful. I'm not trying to put down any other uh, people that are in my industry. I just think it's a service that I need to let people know. And I'm going to add on, and uh, again, uh, selfless promotion here. Uh, I'm not uh, suggesting anyone subscribe to the Morgan Report that isn't a sophisticated investor and understands risk and reward, especially when it comes to a commodity-based asset like silver and gold. But what I will say is that I offer a free e-letter, and that's available on the morganreport.com website. All you need to do is give me a first name and an email address, and I'll send you the riches and resources report for absolutely free, which will give you two movies that will go through what we we'll discussed today, Marie. One is the end of the Age of Empires, called the Four Horsemen film. And this will give you an outline of the cycle of empire and why we're in the final days of this one. It's a global empire led by the United States and what will happen when it crumbles further and what some of the solutions are. And the other one is a film called The Empty ATM, which happens to be a documentary on the financial crisis of Argentina in 2000-2001 and what exactly happened to the citizenry and it's not pretty. There was basically a bail-in. The funds weren't confiscated per se, but uh, the banks would only allow a certain amount of money to come out of anybody's account. The medic had 20,000 pesos or a million pesos or uh, 100 pesos. You're only allowed to extract a certain amount on a weekly basis. And then, of course, the money was held in the bank, except for the small trickle of an amount that they allowed out, and then they devalued the funds. So they basically stole from the people. And uh, it's quite a documentary. So people have asked me again and again and again, what's it going to look like? And the answer is no one knows. But if you look at history, what happened about 15 years ago, you can get a pretty good idea of what took place there. What does that mean? That's how it's going to unravel in, you know, in Spain, for example, or Italy, or Ireland, or the United States, or Canada, we don't know. But what we do know is this is a fact, it's not conjecture, and certainly it's something to bear in mind, because when these empires fall, the only thing those at the top are concerned about is themselves. 
they are not concerned about the citizens. They're not concerned about anything other than trying to keep the system continuing. And of course, at some point, it won't continue, and it cannot. Continue. Well, you make a great point because during the bailout, uh, what could have happened was that all the citizenry that pays taxes uh, could have been bailed out, and that would have been a great stimulus because they probably would have spent. Uh, but what they did was, like you mentioned, they kept the system intact and bailed out uh, those at financial institutions, in essence. So thank you for bringing that uh, to our attention here. Let me ask you this as well, if I may. I would be remiss if I did not discuss the Silver Manifesto. Well, it's available uh, at Amazon and other uh, retailers, but Amazon is probably the easiest. If you want to get it and you're in Canada and you need to go to thesilvermanifesto.com and order it through that web page, and really, if you are interested in economics, it's called the Silver Manifesto, but really it's a book on uh, Austrian economics and a lot about the silver and gold markets. But if you want to learn how to pick a mining stock and how we do it, there's a chapter devoted to that. If you want to know why interest rates are so important, there's two chapters devoted to that. If you want to know why the bond market is going to collapse and what the outcome is going to look like, uh, there's a couple chapters on that. So. Basically, you're getting nine months of hard work with myself and Chris Marchese for a $30 bill. I mean, you couldn't, you know, if you had a consult with us, uh, you know, it cost you thousands, and you could get the book for, for peanuts relative to the amount of effort and information that's available. This is a book for everybody, no, it's not. It's not for somebody that's casual about... Um, the financial markets for someone that probably has an understanding of financial terms. But as far as leaving to, let's say, this generation and those beyond, it was uh, our best effort to do so, and of course, centered primarily around the silver market, but it entails a lot more. And the last chapter is about the beyond silver. Mm-hmm. You know, what does it mean to be human? What is humanity striving for? Why is money important? What are our values all about, and why are we in the predicament we are in? And if we come through this thing uh, in a reasonable manner, which I expect that we will, what will the future look like in a more equitable system? So I ask those questions, and I think that's important, especially for your generation, uh, to struggle with, because we're pretty certain that most people that are alive, awake, and aware know that the system is failing and there's reasons for it and when we come out after the reset we really want a system that works better if we don't change the way money works we really haven't changed anything and that's the most important thought i can give you maurice is that we don't change the way money works we really haven't changed anything amen to that you know offline i'm asked all the time hey you know where where do you get your your information from and one of the resources I always advocate is A, the Morgan Report, and then B, the Silver Manifesto. David Morgan of the Morgan Report, I want to thank you today for joining us on Proven and Probable. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. All the best to you, sir. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.